Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in to today's fur video doing the EC 30 day look at slash six weeks look at uh, for uh, for you for the UK and for uh, the rest of Europe as well. So this is your six weeks uh, European outlook uh, from the ECFWF extended model. And I shall get on with with it for you uh, very shortly. Just to say that the first video released today uh, was our uh, seven a.m. forecast. We've also released the ENSO update for July uh, twenty twenty one as well uh, today. So have a look at that if you're interested in what's going on uh, with ENSO. I'm um, kind of ten to fourteen day uh, with all our regular features coming up for you later on this afternoon please like share subscribe on all of the videos thank you so much everybody uh for the amount of nothing we keep webcam on uh for this one right so we're going to begin with the uh week one mean sea level pressure anomaly which is going to take us from the 26th of july to the 2nd of august uh for europe so northern and western and central europe will be dominated by low pressure uh, in this uh, coming week, or the week that we're currently in. Um, so low pressure will be in control of the weather across much of northern and west Europe, combined with high pressure in the middle of the North Atlantic and going up to Greenland and Iceland. There's also a ridge over on the eastern and southeastern uh, side of Europe. A jet stream is digging southwards as well. So we're looking unsettled and quite cool in the north and the west of Europe with that trough of uh, low. So that's going to be bringing the wind from like north to north east across northern West Europe. But convert Eastern East and South East Europe will be pulling up these hot southerly winds, probably. So, definitely, definitely looks like it could be warmer in the eastern part of Europe. The 500 millibar height anomaly shows this up as well. Again, with the mid Atlantic ridge heading towards Greenland, where we have a trough of low pressure across northern and west parts of Europe, and another ridge is in the southeastern part of Europe. And again, we'll draw up the air from the south. Hot air will push up from Africa with that ridge of high pressure. But at the same time, we will have cool air uh, with a trough of low pressure coming down into the north and the west of Europe. So that's a broad setup. Let's have a look at the temperature anomaly so we confirm uh, what I just said. So uh, western parts of Europe definitely looking cooler than average. You've got Ireland, the UK, most of Germany, uh, the low countries, Belgium, Holland, the Netherlands, France, now Spain and Portugal coming out with cooler than average temperature. Scandinavia, somewhere in between, in between southern parts of uh, uh, Norway and Sweden are a little bit cooler on average, but go further north as actually gets a bit warmer through central and northern parts of Scandinavia and over Baltic Sea in towards Finland, for example. But the real one, the real heat is in this eastern, southeastern part of Europe this week. So from like uh, North Africa into Italy, over the Adriatic into the Balkans and, and then down to the southeast part of Europe, uh, between, say, the Adriatic and Black Sea, looking really hot through there with the temperature anomaly of like six degrees or more uh, above average. So very hot in the east and southeast part of Europe, but much cooler in the north and west. Precipitation-wise, uh, we look like this. So uh, pretty dry, where we've got that ridge of high pressure in this east and southeastern part of Europe. So the ridge is bringing heat wave to southeast Europe, but also it's bringing mainly dry weather as well. Going northwest, it's more unsettled, uh, especially from like the UK uh, towards towards like the Baltic. Uh, looks pretty wet through most of those areas. Uh, is a drier sway uh, that we see through like uh, Portugal and west parts of Spain going up towards uh, eastern parts of Europe. Notice into the Mediterranean, we have uh, eastern uh, Spain and then into central part of them looking a little bit unsettled. So we've got some thunderstorms there, but further east was through Italy, for example, looks pretty dry. Right, so that's uh, week one done. Let's have a look at week two. Then it's going to take us from the 2nd through to the 9th of August. Uh, this one looks pretty unsettled across many parts of Europe um, as well. So, uh, again, we have low pressure dominating here across uh, just many parts of Europe under a trough of low pressure, seemingly. The centre seems to be over Scandinavia, but most parts of Europe look like they're dominated by low pressure. The ridge in that east and southeast part of Europe is really being squeezed over towards the uh, southern shores on Black Sea at this point. The 500 millibar height anomaly uh, looks like that. So, again, looks very unsettled through most of northern, central, and west Europe. And again, trough of below average heights dominating through much of northern, and central, and west Europe. There is a ridge that's in this southern, southeastern part of Europe. It's weakening, but it's still there. Some degree, they're pushing up to southwestern parts of, uh, of Russia. The week two temperature anomaly looks like that, just generally cooling across most parts of Europe. So this is a very cool week, this first week of August. Um, we're looking really cool here from like uh, Norway and uh, and the UK and Ireland all the way down to uh, southwestern and southern Europe. Even in the central part of the Med, looking pretty cool. You have to go to southern Italy 
and then over towards Greece and Turkey to find anything particularly hot. But this is a much cooler week, kind of even Scandinavia and Baltic areas, which have been very warm over the past few weeks. Uh, even there, we've gone cooler than average. So this is a much cooler week being signaled there from those parts of Europe in week two. And week two, precipitation and on looks very unsettled as well. Through most areas above average rainfall, all the way from the west of Europe, really. So, like for Ireland and the UK, I suspect it'd be a little bit wetter than average France. Spain, Portugal, that uh, goes all the way over towards west of Russia. Widespread area and about trough of low that is uh, that's wetter than average. It's in the southeastern corner uh, uh, of the Med uh, and, and the far southeast of Europe, it looks a little bit drier still uh, through there. Even the central bowl of the Med could be getting some heavy showers and thunderstorms again, wetter than average at this point. So, this is a cool, wet week through many parts of Europe in week two. Week 3 is going to be the night through to the 16th of August. And we look like this. We begin to raise the heights a little bit. Begin to raise pressure in the southwest of Europe. So originally the source is trying to get going. Get itself in towards Spain and France. At the same time, though, we've still got quite a bit of low pressure around the UK and Ireland and into Scandinavia. And this area here is a little bit indeterminate. Might be under high, low pressure. Could be seeing this ridge beginning to push through. Let's have a look at 500 millibar height anomaly. This is going to, again, take us from the night 16th of August. So you can see that northern and western Europe is clearly being dominated by low pressure, below average heights around the UK and uh, Ireland. There's a ridge that's trying to build in from the Azores. It looks pretty weak and flimsy, though, uh, I have to say that. Uh, right, temperature anomaly uh, for week three is, again, pretty cool across much of uh, western and even some central parts of Europe. What warm there is in the far north, northeast of Europe, and down this eastern side into the southeastern part of the Med. It's a bit warm and average, a bit hot and average there, but most parts of Europe, again, looking pretty cool, I'm afraid. Uh, or maybe not, if that's what you want, but most parts of Europe, again, are looking pretty cool, and especially like through France, into the low country, into Germany. Um, that that seems to be where the coolest of those uh, below average temperature anomalies are. Precipitation wise, it looks wetter than average across the far north of Europe. So, again, from Ireland and the UK over towards Scandinavia, rather wetter than average through there. Southern parts of Europe, through the Med, looks a little bit drier than average in between. Uh, you know, as pressure is trying to ridge up from the southwest and below is weakening slightly, uh, we're losing the signal to some degree, I think. Uh, then we go through to week four, which is the 16th, 23rd of August. So again, week with the signals now, of course. It looks like we're beginning to get a little bit of ridging, though, across western parts of Europe. So this might be starting to dry things out and warm things up generally. Maybe some lower pressure into the Middle East and perhaps extending into the far eastern part of the Med. But I think generally it looks like higher pressure is beginning to get going here towards the second half of August. Let's have a look at the 500 millibar height storm. It looks very sketchy, uh, doesn't it? But we have got some high pressure like to the north of Scandinavia around Svobard. Uh, but otherwise there's not all that much to see. I'm so sorry, everybody. Not all that much to see in terms of a 500 millibar height anomaly the temperature anomaly you know it's not as cool as it has been but it does still hint at being a little bit on the cooler side actually these northern and west parts of europe southern europe looks a little bit hotter it's a weakening signal but it still looks pretty cool i have to say across many northern and western parts of europe really and the uh, precipitation anomaly weakening signal but maybe into it going a bit drier so like in week three we're sort of average to wetter than average i think in week four we're probably average to drier than average but it is a very weak signal right that's your third today look okay, at done uh, let's just have a look shall we at weeks five and six data before we go because why not uh, so this is week five mean cell pressure and not from 23rd 30th of august very sketchy nothing really to go on no signal uh and then uh precipitation um 500 millibar height anomaly i should say again very sketchy in week five 23rd of august uh to 30th of august no signal again uh temperature anomaly for week five again very sketchy looks about average probably no signal beginning to lose those cold average temperature anomalies though and again no signal for precipitation so week five looks really really sketchy i have to say and then finally this is week six. It's going to be the 30th of August to the 6th of September. Uh, maybe you can get some higher pressure begin to get going across northern parts of Europe. That might bring us something a little bit drier and uh, warmer, perhaps, into the beginning of September. High pressure. Looks like it's getting going around the UK and Ireland. So, again, it could signal 
like um, like uh, classic sort of high pressure, warm, dry start to September. It does happen very, very regularly. Precipitation, temperature normally no particular signal into early September and precipitation wise, um, probably a little bit on the dry side, which of course you'd expect to around the UK and Ireland, West Europe, anyway, they expect uh, with that area of high pressure dominating. Again, nothing much else doing though. Uh, very weak signals really for week five and six. But it is, you know, it's very, very um, common for high pressure to build across northern and western Europe in early September and bring us a spell of, uh, of drier, warmer conditions, particularly after, you know, uh, an unsettled uh, and cool and wet August. So maybe that's what's going to happen, but of course it's six weeks away, so it's a very, very long way off. It's typical, but just because it's typical does not necessarily mean that's what's going to happen. It is a long, long, long way off that. So so we'll know more in a few weeks' time. Right, if you enjoyed this video, day, look ahead uh, for, uh, for Europe, then please uh, like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. Thank you so much, everybody, for doing that. We'll be back later on, the 10 to 14 day. It's going to have all the regular features included as well. Um, so come back for that then. But for this week's 30-day forecast, uh, that's all for now. And thanks for watching.